are going live. One sec. All right, hello and welcome. Welcome to the webinar. I am Parisa Shelton and this is a webinar titled, What is Qigong Teacher Training? So <clears throat> we're just gonna give everyone a minute or two to log on here as we are so absolutely delighted and excited to bring to you this information, this leading edge in information because Qigong, although it is not a new practice, it's now getting more and more momentum. Qi is life force energy and Gong is skill. So essentially Qigong is the skill of harnessing and cultivating, developing your energy to heal the body. Okay, there's different applications and Chris might dive into that in a little bit. So um, let's see, Qigong teacher training, the webinar, I'm Parisa Shelton, and we are going in a moment going to bring on one of my favorite people, my husband and business partner, Chris Shelton, and we are going to talk to you today about what is Qigong teacher training. Qigong is said to be the art that prevents disease and prolongs life. So who doesn't want that, right? We all want a little bit of extra days, feeling a little bit of extra betterness. And so that's what we're gonna discuss in today's presentation. And so in a moment, when I switch the camera over to Chris, he'll talk about the benefits and how much Qigong has not only helped us personally, but also professionally. Chris Shelton is an amazing human being. He's been in the energy arts for over 30 years. He used Qigong and Chinese medicine to heal from a devastating back injury where at the time in his late teens, doctors were saying, Chris, you might not walk again. Chris, you might not ever have sex again. And for, yes, a teenage boy, can you imagine getting that news? So he was very motivated to get better at that time. And through a series of serendipitous experiences, he was led to the art and the practice of Qigong. He healed his own body and then was able to study more and develop himself so that he can also help other people. We've been in business together for 10 years together, but Chris was in business 10 years even before we met. So he's been at this for quite a long time, has worked with thousands and thousands of people, all different shapes and sizes from all different places and corners of the globe. So we work with one-on-one -on -one clients, we work in group classes, we do private sessions in person and online. So it's been quite an adventure and quite a journey. And so we are just so excited, yes, uh, to bring on Chris and let me switch over the camera to him, Mr. Chris Shelton. And Chris, as we get into this presentation today, can you just tell us why this presentation, what is Qigong teacher training, is so important for everybody watching? Yes, it's a valuable art for anybody. And it doesn't matter what your religious background is, doesn't matter, you know, uh, gender. It doesn't discriminate because when we talk about ultimate health, what kind of tools can we give ourselves in order to live the quality of life that we all deserve to have? And that's one of the things that Qigong brings to us is it allows for us to be able to uh, process what goes on in our day-to-day -day life, but more importantly, the things that have happened to us in the past that get stored in our tissues and shows up as disease. So anybody watching here today who is interested in finding out what Qigong is and what Qigong teacher training is, chest in order to improve their health and their overall state of well-being so yes as my screen went dark you your talking. screen went dark Here we yes are. okay qigong teacher training so yeah so you know once again i think that uh, like what Prisa was just saying is that this is not a new art this has been around for thousands of years and and qigong is um the foundation of tai chi it's also the foundation of acupuncture and Chinese medicine. So it's been around for a long time. It's not a belief structure. And what it is, is that it's just simple movements and specific meditations that are all meant to do something medicinally inside the body. So, so I'm so thrilled to have you here today. 
And, you know, um, this next hour or so that we're going to be together, the first thing I'd like for you to do is, you know, to uh, do a, a scan of your body. Like, how, how do you feel on a scale of 1 to 10, taking a mental note? You know, from head to toe, just gently scan your body and feel what's there, feel what's going on with you. Did you wake up with a little kink in your neck? Do you have a slight headache? Or maybe you feel wonderful already. But just taking a mental note as to where you're at. And that's the thing about Qigong also, is that it teaches us how to go inward. You know, how to, how to bring our intentions inside. All right, so you have that mental note as to where you're at right now. And so <clears throat> going to go into the center and balance meditation here. And this meditation is such a simple meditation. You can find it on iTunes. Go to Chris Shelton, center and balance meditation. Also, I have another uh, meditation on iTunes and Spotify as well. It's called the White Pearl Meditation. And the purpose of this meditation that I'm going to be walking you all through is, number one, first and foremost, is to get you out of your head and back into your body, but also too what it's meant to do is it's meant to be able for you to be able to feel your entire body, to feel your body from head to toe and feel what's going on. And because if you're really that aware, they say that you know, in order to prevent disease, we have to have this awareness of what's going on inside of us. So that's one of the main things that you're going to derive from doing this meditation. And the more that you practice this meditation, the more that you'll be able to achieve what it is that I'm talking about. So find yourself a comfortable position. You can do Qigong from a standing position. You also do it from a lying down position. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and continue to sit. And if you're in a seated position, what you wanna go ahead and do is you wanna go ahead and gently close your eyes. And allow your breath to be long, steady, even and deep into the lower abdomen. Tip of the tongue gently curls to the roof of the mouth behind the teeth as if saying the letter N. I gently tuck the chin. By doing so, it presses up on the crown point at the top of the head. Gently tucking the sacrum underneath, pressing back the Ming Men, which is the, also referred to as the gate of fire, the acupuncture point between the left and the right kidneys on the low back. Feet firmly planted on the floor, about shoulders width apart. Hands just gently resting on the knees. Palms either face down or face up, whatever feels comfortable for you. And just feel your breath. Starting at the crown point at the top of the head, imagine warm oil or warm water beginning to melt down through the front of the forehead, enveloping the forehead, the brow bone, eyebrows, and eyes. The temples, the nose, the cheeks. the front of the ears, feel as this warm oil melts down from the base of the nose into the lips, the chin and jaw structure, flowing and pouring into the neck, to the throat, just feel what's there. The upper chest, the shoulders, the biceps, flowing through the biceps into the elbow creases, into the forearms, the wrists, the palms of the hands leading all the way out to the fingertips. Keeping the strong connection between heaven and earth, we're going to allow for this warm oil to melt down into the chest, enveloping the flanks of the body, the side of the rib cage, the abdomen, the waist, the groin, the thighs, the knees, flowing and pouring through the shins, ankles, the top of the feet and toes, just allow for this warm oil to flow down deep into the ground. And just take a moment to feel the entire front of your body from head to toe. Feel what's there. Feel in the left and the right sides of the body. Now starting once again at the crown point, let's feel what's going on behind us. So melting down through the back of the scalp, touching every hair follicle, every cell, every tissue behind the ears, the base of the skull into the neck. Relaxing, flowing and pouring to the shoulders, through the triceps and elbows, the back of the forearms, the wrists, 
the back of the hands leading all the way out to the fingertips. Allow for this warm, warm oil to flow down from the base of the neck, relaxing the upper shoulders, the upper back, the mid back, relaxing through the low back, the waist, the buttocks, flowing through the back of the hamstrings, relaxing behind the knees, the calves, the ankles, the feet and toes, all connecting, all flowing off deep into the ground. And from there, just feel the entire back of your body from head to toe. Feeling just as much in the back as you do in the front, as well as to the left and to the right. Now connecting to your higher self, whatever that may be for you. You can imagine a white light that begins to permeate through the crown point at the top of the head. Increasing your awareness of what's inside of you. This white light envelops the brain. You feel the left and right hemispheres of the brain. The space between the brain and the skull. Flowing down, you feel and visualize the pineal gland, pituitary gland. The bones of the face, the cheeks, you feel the eyes, the nerves that connect from behind the eyes to the center of the brain. Feel and visualize all the blood vessels, muscles of the face, the capillaries. Now the sinus cavity, visualize that. The inner ear. The upper palate of the mouth, the teeth, the gums, the tongue, the lower palate, flowing and pouring from the base of the skull down through the center of the neck and throat. Feel the arteries branching off into the upper chest and shoulders, the biceps, the triceps. The center of the forearms, the center of the wrists, all the small bones and ligaments of the wrist, hands, and fingers. Keeping the strong connection between heaven and earth, this white light now envelops every rib. It feels the ribs wrap around to the spine on the back. You feel the spaces between the ribs. The white light fills up into the, the lungs, the heart, and the pericardium, the sac that protects the heart. Now your liver and gallbladder on the right side of the body. The stomach and spleen on the left side. The intestines. The bladder. The kidneys. The pelvic bone. The bones of the legs, the muscles surrounding them. You visualize and feel as this white light flows into the center of the knees the center of the shins and calves, the ankles, the feet and toes, all connecting, all flowing off deep into the ground. And just take a moment to feel your entire body from head to toe. Feel what's there. Feel just as much in the front as you do in the back, to the left and to the right. And what do you feel going on inside of you? And from here, gently open up your eyes, coming back to the present and relaxing. Wow, how do you feel? All right, so this is one of those meditations. Once again, relaxation is really just the byproduct. Uh, they say that the superior doctor is one that can prevent disease before disease sets in. So the whole idea with Qigong is for you to become so aware of your body that you could actually sense when something is going on. Now, it's not a tangible feeling like holding on to this bottle of water here. It's more of a knowing. And as we're going to go through this presentation, one of the things we are going to discover together is how when our inter internal organs are out of balance, how that actually shows up as disease. And I'm not just talking about issues with the heart or, you know, with our stomach, but I'm talking about how other organs as well, when they're out of balance, shows up as multiple diseases that we see in society today and how emotions are the leading cause of death. Yes. So who am I? Well, you know, this... This short little video here is how I got to where I am right now. And I didn't think that, you know, uh, being a, a healer, a teacher, I didn't think that was never on my radar. Um, this is a sp short little story of how I got to where I am today. It's not the story that I identify myself with, but it definitely is um, a catalyst for me to be able to uh, transform my life and to be able to share with you 
the, the knowledge that I've gained throughout the years. So sit back and enjoy this short little video. Okay, so yeah, so that's a little quick story of how I got to where I am today. And, uh, you know, and so I'm, I'm, my message to everybody is that if I could transform myself and heal myself, that you can too. So if you're joining us today and uh, maybe you have some inflammation going on inside your body, maybe there is some depression or some anxiety, you know, then um, 
these these simple practices, believe it or not, is what transformed it for me. You know, it's like I said in the video there, you know, those severe digestive problems. You know, if I ate a salad or if I ate an avocado, I was in a, a fetal position one to two hours later in chronic pain. Or, um, you know, if I ate any kind of animal fat or anything like that, I was vomiting or, you know, waking up at one to three a.m. in the morning. And is just the sudden surprise or the sudden realization, like I had said in the video there, that, oh, wow, you know, I'm not suffering from those ailments anymore. Now, psychologically, too, because I used to have OCD, which is obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, I realized that uh, after about a year of doing the practices that I stopped uh, obsessing over certain things. So I, I wasn't as bad as some people have the condition, but I was definitely somebody who every night had to check the door uh, 30 times, or I had to check the stove 30 times before, you know, going to bed. So those kinds of things I realized as well, too. The other thing I had going on for me that I didn't talk about is, uh, in which in hindsight, I recognize is the reason why I had the digestive problems, but I had a lot of anger issues as well. And, um, and if, you know, you saw the, the home that I lived in, you would understand why, you know, and, and over the years, you know, uh, you know, people say, Chris, you're angry. I'd be like, oh, screw you, you're angry. And then over the years, I was able to start to transform that as well, too. So, yeah, so I can't say enough about how this, uh, the, how these practices has transformed my life and, and, and has brought me on to this journey to find my life purpose. So one of my main goals here today is for you to have the tools to increase your ability uh, for tolerant, the ability of tolerance to, uh, for challenges and at the same time too being able to boost your emotional uh, mental emotional awareness so what i expect from or what you can expect from today's talk is um, number one is for you to hopefully feel better than what you um, did when you first logged on um, gain clarity how chronic stress could lead to burnout so we're going to talk about burnout that's uh, uh, a chronic condition and shows up in many different ways I'm going to be talking about simple tips that will boost your tolerance for challenge and then guiding and then we'll be guiding you as well too into understanding what your life purpose is. What does that even look like for you? All right, how, so how do we build a tolerance for challenge? You know, uh, I was talking about this on the webinar on Friday. You know, when I was a little kid, my mom would, uh, every time I got dirty or got dirt on me, she would throw me in the bathtub and, and, um, and wash me off. And, Finally, the doctor back then, Dr. O'Halloran, I believe his name was, you know, he said, you know, let the kid get dirty because the only way that he could build his immune system is by getting dirty, learning how to, uh, you know, deal with whatever's in the dirt at that time. And so, so that's one example of allowing for your body to build a tolerance for challenge. But in this day and age, when we are connected by our computers, we're so connected uh, on our phones, uh, you know, we're being bombarded with information, you know, uh, some of it, we don't even know if it's the truth or not. And anyways, we're being constantly bombarded. And, and when you have that kind of bombardment, then our nervous systems are always going or always on, it's always in fight or flight mode. And one of the, one of the biggest uh, conditions or one of the most prominent conditions that I see in my clinical practice seeing patients is back issues. And we're talking about lower lumbar issues. And it used to be when I was uh, uh, a young child back in the growing up in the 70s uh, or even the early 80s, you know, the only people you heard about getting back problems were, you know, people that were obese and, and uh, couch potatoes. But nowadays it doesn't discriminate. And one time some of our clients were, was flying me out to Skokie, Illinois, and um, I was seeing these young basketball players that had a chance to play college ball and maybe go on to play professionally. And they're and being diagnosed with lumbar stenosis and doctors are saying your basketball career is done. And I'd have them up and running within about 10 or 15 minutes. And one time flying back from Skokie, I, I was pondering, well, why is it, you know, that these young, they're young, you know, they're 18, 19 years old and they're fit, they're healthy. Why are they ending up with these conditions? And I realized that our sympathetic nervous system, which is the part of the nervous system for our fight or flight, is constantly on. You know, when God developed our bodies, and that part of the nervous system was only meant to be activated when you were in danger. So let's say if you're being chased by a bear, your house was on fire, you know, this is where that sympathetic nervous system kicks in. And then what happens is, is that unfortunately, nowadays I realize 
that the sympathetic nervous system doesn't know the difference between being chased by a bear, your house being on fire, running late for an appointment, being behind on your bills, or being bombarded by the constant information from social media and what we see on, on television. So these tools can actually help us navigate because let's be honest, the internet's not going away. And uh, you know, with this new metaverse thing that's gonna be coming out here within the next couple of years, you know, we're gonna be more entrenched into things that stimulate that uh, sympathetic nervous system. So how can we navigate that and uh, still be a part of that reality that, w that, that we're in and be able to prevent disease in the process? Because here's the reality. We have the stressor. Now, sometimes, grant you, we could have internal stressors or things that we do to ourselves, like eat too much sugar, um, drink too much alcohol or something. Now, that would create an internal stressor. And chances are, if, if you are uh, abusing food or sugar um, or alcohol, uh, chances are there's something else going on in the outside environment, which um, has gone on to the inside environment. And this is the reason why. Uh, you're feeling comforted, comforted by being able to medicate yourself this way. So, so we have the stressor, we have the outside stressor. Um, then what happens is our bodies will react to that stress. And once again, we're talking about that sympathetic nervous system, it's fight or flight. And over time, what happens is, is that there's wear and tear on the body. And this wear and tear on the body uh, shows up as dysfunctions within the internal organ system. So for example, if we see conditions, for example, like Crohn's or IBS, yes, there's an intestinal issue, but the reality is too, is that the darn liver is out of balance. It's a contributing factor to these uh, uh, gastrointestinal problems. So what happens then? Well, reduced ultimate health, maybe now as a result of this, now you're waking up in the middle of the night and not sleeping well, maybe um, uh, you're not assimilating your food properly now. And then what happens is because your body is weakened, we have an increased sensitivity to stress. So it's this round robin that keeps on going, keeps on going. So what kinds of things can we do? And this is where Qigong comes in. Now this is what is Qigong teacher training, but the reality is, I'm just gonna say it right now, the reality is, is that majority of the people that take our Qigong teacher training course actually are doing it to dive deeper into themselves. And this is where it has to begin because to create positive change in the world, is to be able to first start with ourselves, transform our own lives, to transform how we deal with stress, and then be able to share that knowledge with other people. Because here's a common term nowadays, especially uh, my wife and I, you know, we're coming to you live from Los Angeles, California, uh, but also too, we live in San Jose in the, in the Silicon Valley. And one of the things that we see in the heart of Silicon Valley is burnout. Younger and younger people are men and women are being burnt out. And some of the telltale signs that we're seeing is, you know, someone in their uh, early 20s or mid 20s developing chronic tremors. Well, those chronic tremors is the stressor. It's the stressor showing that, hey, you know, you better listen to me because one of the things that we're seeing up there is uh, younger and younger cases of aneurysms and strokes. Now, this is not by accident. You know, our, our bodies are not meant to deal with this kind of influx. And, and, and we're not even going to, to talk about what's happened to our food chain and what's going on with the food. You know, there's so many different things that are causing stressors. So when we are burnt out, this is where disease shows up. So how can we recognize that burnout is kicking in? Well, like I said, if you're developing tremors, if you're having disturbed sleep, maybe you're waking up between one and 3 a.m. in the morning, um, maybe you are bloated or you are now uh, having a chronic um, uh, constipation or, or, or pain inside the body. Now this could be the sign, okay? These are all signs. They're this your body's way of talking to you. Even that little common little eye tremor that, uh, uh, that sometimes we may get at most, more than likely in the most inappropriate time when you're face-to-face -face talking to somebody, but that little eye tremor is a warning sign to listen to me. There may be a, um, a mild stressor or a temporary stressor causing that eye tick or eye twitch, or it could be something much greater that's going to be uh, affecting your health down the road if you don't listen to that eye twitch. Okay, so how do we reverse? Well, one of the ways that we reverse it is then these practices of Qigong. And so what I love about Qigong is that it has a mindfulness aspect of it, but then also it has an active aspect. And what do I mean by active? Meaning that these internal organs of the body uh, all have different emotions that will affect them. And when there's a disruption, 
of those organs as a result of stored uh, uh, negative emotions, then what happens is, is that this is what shows up as disease. And then also too, the nice thing about uh, Qigong and the uh, teacher training program too is that we actually have a big community of, of people that uh, are like-minded just like you. And then this resilience, and this is what I talk about, the resilience. So in Chinese, they call it Wu Wei, doing but non-doing. What does that mean? That means, well, you know, let's say like a, uh, the, a body, you have a body of water and the waves and the wind are blowing and uh, creating chaos. But then in the depths of the water, there's stillness. So this is an analogy for life. We want you to be able to get to the place to where even if there's chaos going on around you, you're able to maintain the stillness and the centeredness. And this is how we build our resilience. So one of my favorite uh, mentors, I guess you would say, on character building and, and how to build your financial independence is this man here, Jim Rome. And uh, Jim, you know, uh, he's an amazing speaker. Uh, Tony Robbins studied with him. Uh, when Tony was first getting his start, and so many people had studied with this man, and uh, he has a lot of good audio, uh, live audience audio um, uh, uh, recordings. And one of the things that he says is that the same wind blows on us all. It's the set of the sail that determines the outcome. Okay, so the same wind. So we have the winds of change. We have the winds of struggle. We have the winds of disease. Right. How do we navigate this? How do we work through it? And like for myself, for example, going back to that video that, I sh that we started off with today, um, yes, I had the winds of challenge. I had a winds of neglect. I had a winds, the winds of uh, uh, abuse or verbal abuse. And, you know, I could have kept on blaming my parents and kept on that, on that trajectory of where I was going, but I decided to change the direction of my sail. And it just so happened that Qigong came into my life, you know, at such a young age where I saw the benefits pretty much immediately. And it's one of those things that you just cannot deny when, it, when that is happening. So the same wind blows on us all. We just need to change the direction of the sail. And then this is what will change the outcomes in our life. And so some of the benefits of Qigong is, well, a sense of community because in order to create positive change in the world, it starts with us. You know, we can't sit there, and, and uh, Eckhart Tolle is one of my, another favorite philosopher of mine, and um, but he talks a lot about the ego and about being, about being present, and one of the things that uh, um, the Eckhart would say is, is that, you know, when you use terms like the war on drugs, the war on poverty, uh, all you do is you create more war. So one of the benefits of Qigong is that it allows us to calm our minds, take a pause, and actually redirect our thought processes, which then we can redirect it in a positive, in a positive manner. Now, in, according to Chinese philosophy or Chinese medicine, we're all supposed to live to be 120 years, and that's not suffering uh, 120 years till the day you die. So the whole idea of Qigong is to give you the tools that help to increase your mental, emotional, and your physical well-being. And what's great is, is if you're somebody who is an athlete, who is out there competing, or somebody who likes to exercise, this is something that actually comes, works to, in harmony together because yes, it's great to be able to, uh, to hydrate enough, to get enough sleep, to eat the proper foods, to exercise daily. Um, but also we need something to come inside as well too because we see it more than one, once in clinic. You know, uh, one of my favorite case studies that I like to talk about is a gal that came in with a back issue years ago. She was a personal trainer. And uh, one of the ways I could diagnose is I could read the face. And uh, so when I was doing her intake, I said, okay, well, we'll fix your back, but we have to deal with the anger issues or the resentment issues that you have towards men. And she scoffed at me. She says, what are you talking about? She goes, I dealt with that stuff years ago. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So anyways, um, we did fix her back, but she would still come in if she got a cold or a flu and, um, or something was going on with her body. And then one day something, she came in and something she said, uh, something I saw on her face, something I saw on her tongue. I said, I need you to make an appointment with your primary. I want your carotid arteries tested. She goes, you're crazy. She goes, look at me. I have almost 0% body fat. I work out one to two hours every day. I eat healthy. And I said, well, I'm seeing this. So, you know, please take my advice. A couple weeks later, she was sitting in my lobby in the office and she was in tears and she said, I want to thank you for saving my life. Both my carotid arteries are 70% blocked. 
so she's eating right and she's exercising what was the one component that she was missing and that was this old anger and this old resentment okay all right so um and so this is what i'm talking about uh, how qigong helps to increase our tolerance for challenge so i said this in the beginning of our talk uh, of our discussion today is that qigong teaches you to become your own superior doctor and really what does that mean that means that you could actually sense when one of the one or more of these organs are out of balance before it actually shows up as disease and that's what's really important because your body like i said your bodies are always talking to you even that little eye tremor by the way that's a liver kidney condition in chinese medicine that's, now uh, we could go into great detail as to how that is, but that little eye tremor is a combination of a liver and a kidney dysfunction. Now, it's not something that you're going to find in a blood test or, some, or anything like that, but because of all of the thousands of years of being able to observe the body and the internal organs, we understand that there is that connection between the two, and this is what's causing actually that eye tremor, okay? So, <clears throat> again, being aware enough to say, okay, uh, I have that little eye tremor going on, or I can actually feel when, when my spleen is out of balance, you know, before it shows up as a, some kind of chronic inflammation or disease, okay? Because when we look at the body, then we look at our mind-body connection. So, you know, uh, several years ago, Priest and I had the uh, opportunity to see Eckhart Tolle and Deepak Chopra speak at the Shrine Auditorium here in Los Angeles. And one of the things that Deepak Chopra said, there was a, there had two chairs, there was a little table between them with a vase with a flower in it. And Deepak says, I want everybody in the audience to stare at the vase or stare at the flower. And everybody does that. Then he says, okay, now everybody close your eyes. And he says, can you, can everybody see the flower? And of course, everybody nodded and said, yes, we can see the flower. Deepak Chopra said, open up your eyes. He said, nowhere inside your brain is there a flower. So what does this represent? This represents that the brain is a reflection of your reality. There's a, you know, and for years scientists have been trying to find where our consciousness is. Where is this consciousness that they talk about? It's not located in the brain. In fact, in fact, there's actually a group of scientists in the Santa Cruz area, um, in Felton, I believe it is, called HeartMath. And these scientists are actually proving that guess what? Our consciousness is here in the heart. So that's one of the things that Qigong does is it helps to have the heart and the mind connect together. And this is what helps us to have clarity of thinking, helps with the, our cognitive abilities, helps us to respond appropriately with emotional responses. Because we're talking about emotions and how that shows up as disease. And, you know, these emotions are actually good because they are a barometer as to what is going on in our life. You know, so... Um, you know, anger, for example, gets a bad rap, but you, did you know that anger is there to help you fight for the underdog, to get yourself out of a bad situation, or to create positive change in the world, or to, to do something creative? That's what that anger is for. But when you repress it, guess what? It turns into depression, and it turns into anxiety, it turns into sleep disorders, it turns into all kinds of digestive disorders, uh, it may show up as uh, detached retinas or floaters in the eyes, or flowery vision of the eyes, migraines also. So, so again, these emotions are good. And so there's, are meant to be shown appropriately. And one of the things that Qigong does is it allows us the opportunity to develop our voice, to be able to speak our truth, and to be able to process what goes on in our life appropriately without uh, pretending, first and foremost, pre pretending like it's not there or, and or suppressing it and not express it inappropriately. <clears throat> so the reality about uh, stress reduction is, is that our minds are more powerful than people realize. And in fact, in Qigong, we have a saying that says, uh, allow for the imagination to lead the mind and the mind to move the free flow of the qi. So what does that mean? That means that we're using our mind intent in order to guide this. Now, I am a big believer in quantum physics and uh, being able to co-create your reality um, by what you think. I mean, how many times have you done that where you've thought of somebody you haven't seen in 10 years and all of a sudden the next day that person calls or, or shows up on your front doorstep, you know? Um, it's because it was a passing thought. So that's why they, we have a saying that it's great 
to be able to be an observer over your mind. So uh, this is the other thing that Eckhart Tolle talks about as well too. Really observe what's going on with your thoughts. Because in this case here, we want to use our minds, our mind intent in order to guide this chi. And when a patient comes in with like Crohn's disease or they come in with lupus or they come in with Lyme disease, you know, one of the things I change right away is when they refer to themselves as this is my lupus or this is my Crohn's disease or this is my, um, you know, Lyme. My, my uh, talk with them is, no, let's change this. Let's not own it. Let's not sit there and say that this is my disease, right? Let's talk about now how do we transform it and say, okay, well, this is an imbalance, yes, and, and now I have the capabilities to be able to change and transform this, uh, this balance. And once you start to um, apply these simple practices to your life, they're so simple to do. And you know, it only takes about 15 minutes a day. Um, you'll start to see the results. And then you get to d develop the life that you deserve, which is a life full of abundance, peace, and happiness, and ultimate health. So one of my favorite Qigong practices that we do, uh, that I teach, and also uh, Priest and I, we have what is referred to as the Qi Club, which is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday a live class on Zoom from 8 to 8.30 Pacific Standard Time. We have people from all around the world, uh, members, and we do Qigong for a half hour. And as I'm teaching the classes, uh, or as the priest is teaching the classes, what we do is we, you know, we talk about the benefits of the practices that we're doing. One of my favorite practices to teach is, is called Shake It Off, and, uh, or like the twi uh, uh, Taylor Swift song, <laughs> Shake It Off. Uh, it, because we're one of the only animals or mammals on land that does not shake it off when something happens. So if you think about it, you know, if a dog is happy to see you or if that dog is angry, that dog will shake from head to toe. If, uh, for example, um, two ducks get into a fight, the fight lasts, you know, a few seconds and what happens? They swim away and they flap their wings. Why? Because they're conscious enough to realize that they have this vibration inside their body. Now, they may not know that it's anger like humans do, but they are conscious, conscious enough to feel this vibration and then they release it by flapping their wings. If they held on to it like most of us humans do, then what happens is, is that they swim around the pond or the lake you know, waiting to punch Bob in the beak. And so, um, so animals are much more aware. So shaking it off. And this practice, you know, we do it three or four times, but I, I'll tell you, I had a situation uh, several years ago uh, where my uh, older brother had written this nasty email to me and um, my our oldest daughter she was uh, living in the central coast at the time and she sent me a text she said can I punch Uncle Donnie in the face I said sure but why she goes did you see that email anyways it was a really a condescending negative email and uh, Prisa came home she's like oh my god did you read that email she read it to me and like most people I'm a human just like most people the first thing it does is it starts to trigger that sympathetic nervous system, like you want to react. And I didn't react. What I did instead was I shook it off. And now throughout the day, I had to shake it off because at any time that, that that thought would pop into my mind, I could feel it created a charge inside my body, I would shake it off. And it's okay if you still have the thought in, you know, pop up. We just don't want the vibration in the body that creates inflammation and creates disease. That's, that's the key. All right, so something as simple as shaking it off. So the next time you get into an argument with your spouse, shake it off. Now, I wouldn't recommend that you don't do it in front of your spouse. I'd recommend that you go into another room. But uh, yeah, shaking it off is such a powerful practice to do. All right, so <clears throat> one of the other things I love about Qigong too, and this is, was talking about the active stage of uh, the mindfulness stage, and then also there's an active part of Qigong, which is the organ cleansing exercises. Now, our five major organs of the body, our heart, our lungs, our liver, um, kidneys, and our spleen are mainly responsible for sustaining our life. Now, most people don't realize that different emotions attack different organs of the body. So going back to the heart-mind connection, our heart is the emperor empress of the body. It, uh, you know, it will dictate how much of an emotion will be expressed or how much will be suppressed. Okay, so for example, the heart is affected by the emotions of abandonment, loneliness, lack of joy, those types of things, but the heart takes the brunt of all the emotions. So if you think about it, if you lost a loved one or one of your pets had to be put to sleep, I'm sure you probably heard our dog in the background making herself known, um, you know, uh, it affects the heart and then it weakens your lungs. Um, 
If you're angry at something, what happens? Your heart races, then it weakens your liver and your gallbladder. If you're worried about something or anxious about something, what happens? Your heart races, then it weakens your spleen and your stomach. Um, if you're fearful of something, what happens? Your heart races, and then it weakens your kidneys and your bladder. So these different movements that we teach are, are beneficial to be able to deal with not only day-to-day -day trauma, but also old trauma. So the, the way you make it into a mindfulness practice, for example, is let's say you have some old anger, some father issues. Um, I definitely had mommy issues, uh, that's for sure. And, um, um, and daddy issues as well too, but in my case it was mostly mommy issues. And so what you do to make it uh, more of a practical practice or a mindfulness practice is you would focus on different components or different aspects that created this anger or old anger resentment for you. And as you just say, we're doing the liver move, then you inhale, imagine a green cloud filling up into the liver, feel that circumstance. And as you exhale, imagine that circumstance leaving like a dark cloud going several feet away from the body and down deep into the ground. So when we release these negative emotions, guess what? We have clarity of mind. We have clarity of thought. And one of the things that we end up doing is now that our nervous system has calmed down, we come from a place of conscious action as opposed to reaction, which is huge because so much out there right now and so many people are reactive. It's because their nervous system is in this fight or flight. So this is the great thing about doing these Qigong uh, cleansing exercises is that it's almost like therapy in a way uh, because I'm asking you to pick off the scab. But by doing the practices, guess what? you release the vibration which creates the disharmony which shows up as the disease and the dysfunction. Now this is a great picture because uh, I don't know if I said this in that little video or not but uh, you know I was a butcher for 21 years. Like I said I didn't realize that uh, Qigong and Chinese medicine was going to be my life purpose. In fact in high school even though I started doing drugs at age 11 half or 12 I still had a lot of ambition, so I did my AP studies in art, uh, ended up with a couple art scholarships. Uh, age 15, I, or 15 and a half, I started my career becoming a, a butcher. Um, I also was going to school half time, part time. Um, starting my sophomore year, I'd go to high school, and then a bus would come pick me and other students up, and then we'd actually would go uh, to this adult educational school where I got my Class A state brake license, my license for overhauling engines, tune-ups and electrical systems, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, okay, well, if I don't make it as a butcher, I'll make it as an artist. If I don't make it as an artist, then, um, then I'm going to be a mechanic. So c coming into being a healer and working with thousands of people from around the world, I did not recognize that this, at the time, that this was going to be my life purpose. And once you start to develop yourself, maybe you are somebody that's looking for change. Maybe if you're like me, when I first started becoming a butcher, it was, uh, you know, I really enjoyed it because um, it was really a craft back in the day. Um, and I loved working with all the guys that I worked with and such. But uh, over the years, and then the more I started practicing Qigong, I think my vibration was increasing and I dreaded going into work. And I was a meat manager. And uh, when I retired, I was a meat manager. And... This is what I talk about when you are on your path also of your life purpose is that for myself what happened was was that as a butcher especially as a meat manager you could not work less than 40 hours a week. You had to work a minimum of 40 hours a week and I was pretty good with numbers so what would happen is is that uh, if there was a, a, a meat shop that wasn't doing that well they would actually would send me into those shops and help to uh, bring the profits back up. And uh, the supervisors would tell the store managers, you know, don't pay attention to Chris Shelton's time and attendance, just let him do his thing. So, uh, you know, for the last couple of years before I retired, I only worked 20 hours a week. And those 20 hours was, was to uh, the minimum amount of hours that I needed in order to keep my health benefits. But this goes to show you, so I, you know, I started to realize like, hey, you know, as my business was growing as a healer and as an instructor, then I was able to cut back my hours as a butcher to where I finally retired after 21 years in the industry. So developing yourself can help you understand what is your life purpose. Maybe you want to be uh, get into healing and helping other people. Maybe you already are doing that. And so one of the things 
the uh, 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 lecture we were here in Los Angeles at uh, the uh, da- uh, no, not the Dow Wellness at Yosan University here in Los Angeles. What happened was was that Dr. Mao was talking about you know our five health. So we have our financial health, we have our relationship health, we have our mental health, we have our physical health. The fifth one is is our spiritual health, which is our life purpose. And he made a statement. He said, you know, before you come into this life form, you are to find your life purpose because that's the way that God or the universe is able to express itself is when you are fulfilled with joy doing what it is that you love to do. <clears throat> so when you find that life purpose, guess what? You enhance your own well-being. And if you decide to become some or change careers or maybe you already are uh, a healer and uh, maybe you're a chiropractor, a physician, or uh, maybe you work in the mental health field, then adding these practices to your repertoire is only going to benefit uh, your patients and your clients so much more because um, as you develop yourself, guess what? Your own well-being increases, so you get increased health, longevity, you have more joy and presence in your life, you get to help others, and that's a, that's a lot of fun, that's very fulfilling. And for like for ourselves, like creating your own dream job. I mean, uh, pre-COVID, uh, my friend down here in Los Angeles, Eric the Trainer, he's a Hollywood physique expert. Thanks to him, I was on tour for a little bit with Def Leppard and Journey, flying around with them, treating them while they're on tour. You know, there's been so many great things. We've been able to perform at the Fit Expo. Um, I was just in a movie with my friend uh, Tybo creator Billy Blanks. Uh, that should be coming out later on this year. So, I mean, there's been so many things that have happened that I, I like I never could even uh, couldn't even imagine. But it's because of the joy that I get to have by being able to teach people like you on how to have the life that you deserve to have. So, <clears throat> we'd like to introduce our Qigong teacher training course. And um, you know what's fun about this course is that we say that it's the most comprehensive course out there. And once again, I really have to reiterate, because somebody also asked this question on Friday, um, Chris, what if I don't want to teach? Well, that's great, because we found that there's actually quite a few people that just take the course, because if they want to speed up the process of diving in deeper and peeling away the layers, the way that this course is laid out is to be able to allow for you to do that. So that's the really the cool thing about it. Um, and here's a couple of uh, Qigong teacher trainers. Actually, Michelle finished level one, Tom finished both level one and level two, and now he is um, uh, planning on joining the medical program that we're going to be launching by summer this year. And so one of the things that Tom said here is that I appreciate the multiple ways content was presented. The reading materials, both printouts and books supported one another. The interview, teacher tips, and P's pep talk videos also supplemented the weekly topics. I really felt like I had heard and read it multiple times such that I could re- really grasp the information. Chris and Prisa have a genuine passion for sharing their knowledge and helping others on their path to personal growth through Qigong. Now here's somebody also, he has, he has a few businesses, um, he's, he already has an entrepreneurial uh, mindset, uh, but uh, one of the biggest businesses that he has is um, carpet cleaning and he said, Chris, he goes, I really want to do what you do. And he already has a gift of healing. You know, he's a very, he definitely is a person of God and um, he helps people through, um, you know, praying for them and laying of hands, those kinds of things. But now he, what is happening is, is that he's seen the power within himself, being able to reduce his blood pressure from doing these practices and just how good that he feels, you know. So Tom, um, um, uh, what is it called? Your second spring, is that what it's called? Referred to as your second spring. So his second spring is is that he wants to learn how to heal people. And so he'll be taking our medical program and then becoming an intern from there. And then we'll be giving him our, our San Jose clients. Okay, so signing up, what will you receive? So uh, obviously you're going to receive the ability to handle stress, to be able to handle burnout. So the tools to handle challenge, right? And create positive transformation in your life. Um, you know, uh, foundational practice to enhance your personal well-being, which is priceless, you know. And Jim Rohn said this also um, in one of his talks. He said, you know, if somebody had heart disease for five years and wrote a book on it, 
he said, you know, the uh, the book that you buy, you know, you're paying the thirty dollars because the thirty dollars is is uh, is paying for the printing, the publishing, etc. But that kind of wisdom, and if it saved you five years, and if it saved you a trip to the hospital, uh, that kind of information is priceless. Like that's something that you carry with you and share with other people. So that's the great thing is that this investment in yourself. How often do you go back and do you invest into yourself? You know, um, it's something that a lot of us neglect to do. And actually in Chinese face reading, we could actually tell if somebody over nurtures other people and doesn't get enough back because they'll have little lines around their mouth. Uh, and for some, some people call those smoker lines, and, and a lot of these people don't smoke, but the lines are forming like that because they give too much of themselves. So what kind of things can you do to restore your own health, to give back and nurture yourself? And once again, it's something that is really, really, really priceless because um, if there's something out there, like Jim Rohn says, that prolongs your life, avoids, helps you to avoid, um, cause, um, and, you know, destructive behaviors or, or hardships in your life, then this is priceless. So, and you'll be able to share this with other people. So the next level one starts here, gosh, in a little bit over a week on, uh, January 31st. It's a one-time investment of 1996 or three monthly payments of six 96. So the last day to sign up will be January 28th. And please take advantage of this. Now, this is what we call as a uh, closed cart, meaning that uh, once we start the program, you have to wait at least six months uh, before we start another level one. So if it's something you've been contemplating doing uh, or something that you know that you need to do, um, this is the time to do it right here, right now, January. How many people, how many of us come January 1st to make these resolutions that, you know, I'm going to take better care of my health. Well, if that was one of your resolutions is to take better care of your health or maybe to find your life purpose. Then this is the opportunity to take right now because you're watching this webinar because somewhere the universe has aligned us together in order for you to be given this kind of information. And once again, it's just one of those things that's a priceless investment in yourself. And the nice thing is, is that you have, the materials that you get, all the materials, so every Monday what happens is, is that uh, Monday morning you will receive four videos, four short videos, uh, the handouts that you could print, uh, uh, a Qigong teacher trainer binder, you'll receive a t-shirt as well too. And uh, let's say you have a week or two that you're really, really, really busy. The nice thing is, is that once you have the information, you have the information for a lifetime. So you could always catch up at the very end. And the other cool thing too is that um, it's an interactive program, meaning that uh, there's a live forum. Uh, we have at least three Zoom calls through the 13 weeks so you can meet everybody in your community, in your tribe for further support. And then at the end of the 13 weeks, we meet in person for a weekend workshop. And if you live somewhere else in the world or you can't make it to the live weekend workshop, then we could actually Zoom you in. And we've had to do that because uh, we've had people from Chile, from Europe, from Australia take the course. And so we really make it feel like you're actually a part of the class. Okay. So yes, be the change that you wish to see. And, you know, I'm so grateful that you've given us your time and your energy this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you are. And uh, take a pause and breathe and, and remember that the more that we go inward, the more that we're able to reduce inflammation and stop the spread of disease. And so this is why this program is right for you. So is there any questions? Woo! All right, Chris, that was a great presentation. We're getting lots of really great responses. Yes, we do have a few questions. Is now a good time to ask them? Sure. Okay, well, one question that's been coming, um, a recurring theme is that what is the time investment in this program? Like how much time, I know the cost, but how much time do I need to dedicate um, for the 13 weeks that I'm in level one? Well, at least for the reading material and to watch the videos, I'm gonna say at least a few hours every week. But what we would like for you to do is to spend whatever the practice is, like week number one, for example, we teach the white pearl meditation. Uh, so we'd like for you to practice that meditation throughout the week and get used to it. So. So a daily, start developing a daily practice of, like I said, 10 to 15 minutes is very beneficial in order to fully grasp and understand the information that's being presented. Mm, okay, that's great. Thank you so much. And then also, um, there's another question. You had mentioned the medical 
uh, you said something about Tom doing a medical mm -hmm. course. Um, how do people learn about that or what does that entail? Okay, so what brought me into, uh, here's a long-winded answer to that. What brought me into Los Angeles uh, was, once again, my friend Eric the Trainer, who we met, what, over 10 years ago. Um, so what had happened was up there in San Jose, my old fight coach is Kung Lee, who is a UF, professional UFC fighter, uh, strike force champion, uh, later on started to get into movies. And uh, Coach Kung got me publicity in San Jose that I could never pay for. I, uh, Showtime has been in my office up there, NBC Sports has been in my office for interviews. Uh, the UFC has been there twice uh, uh, with their cameras. Vietnamese television from LA has been up there. And um, so what, what happened is, is that Eric started to bring us down. And he said, when I first met him, he said, you know, Chris, no, Kung told me about the healing magic that you do up there in the San Francisco Bay Area. He goes, nobody's doing this in Los Angeles. I said, Eric, give me a break. This is LA. There's millions of people here. There has to be somebody. He goes, no, I know the who's who. And at the time, I thought he was kind of full of it because there's so many people in LA that say, I know the who's who or whatever. But Eric really does. I mean, thanks to Eric, um, uh, I met Maria Shriver, became friends with her. And then I got to present Qigong at the World Games in 2015 or 16. Um, 2015 and she's published 14 of my articles so so many things have happened so what happened was I had to ask myself because Priest and I were flying back and forth and it's like well why am I killing myself t to fly down to LA and uh, cause, because Eric was giving me all of his high profile clients and I realized that the next stage is television and, um, and what I'm hoping for two, two things from the TV show uh, number one first and foremost is uh, Show the world that you don't have to live with pain and disease, that you can transform it if you could just understand the body. But number two, hoping to find people like yourselves that want to do the medical program. So what does this mean? It means that I can reproduce what I do in clinical my clinical practice that I've used with thousands of patients, which is the reason why Eric the Trainer um, started bringing us into Los Angeles to begin with. So the precursor uh, to be able to join the medical program is that you uh, the student has to take level one and level two of the teacher training because number one and, and because I've been in clinical practice for so long there's so many times that we had sublease out to uh, other acupuncturists or other healers and they were the wounded healer meaning that they are prescribing and recommending things and yet they were still hurt on the inside and not really doing anything about it now uh, don't get me wrong here I, I have God has given me my golden ticket to uh, like the rest of your life is going to be easy. And there are some things that I'm still working through and processing through just like everybody else. But that awareness and being that honesty with yourself that no, there's things that I need to work on still or things I need to cultivate. So uh, what we realized is, is that uh, first and foremost, we want people to start to understand these Qigong practices. Because like I said at the very beginning of the talk, Qigong is actually the foundation of acupuncture in Chinese medicine. And then from there, when the other thing that comes about from doing level one and level two, what it does is it allows you to experience qi. So maybe you haven't, don't know what qi is, they haven't experienced it. By end of level two, you should have an understanding for which then, when you get into the medical program, uh, um, when we talk about qi uh, in the foundations part of the course, when we talk about uh, um, qi and uh, the vital substance, for example, you have a deeper understanding, right? Because when we are trying to move energy through acupuncture points and channels and organs, we need to have a deeper understanding as to what that is. So. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, one more question looks like, at least for now, which is um, regarding the weekend workshop, uh, what if I can't travel to San Jose? Will I still get the same experience? Yes, and that's what I was talking about. What's really cool is uh, we put you up on, on the big screen, on the flat screen TV. Um, and then, you know, while I'm teaching the, the day seminar, you know, Prisa is moving the camera around and it really feels like you're part of the group. So if you can't make it, uh, we have you uh, log in uh, via Zoom and, um, and we really try to make it as though you're part of the group. Um, and then also because on this, it's a Saturday and Sunday, and on Sunday, there's actually a practical exam where you have to uh, put together a Qigong routine, a 15 minute Qigong routine and teach it to the group. And so we really make it as though you're part of the class. So it's, uh, uh, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback from people that have not been able to make it in person. So yeah, so it's great. So we really look forward to, to having you there.
Oh, thank you so much. Okay, that looks like that's uh, winding down. And as we do wind down here, Chris, do you have any closing thoughts for us? Uh, closing thoughts. I, I would say that yes, uh, make the investment. It's, it's a small investment. For some people, it might be a stretch. Uh, that's why we have the different payment options also. But the investment in yourself is priceless. And, and the knowledge that you gain from doing these practices and watching it transform your life, the great thing is then you can share that with other people. Now, if you want to become a teacher, we actually will help uh, support you and promote you. We actually um, um, contract with a, a lot of our teachers that have finished to teach uh, classes for us because we do have government contracts for which they request these types of services. And so uh, Priest and I can't be everywhere at once and so we do contract out with some of these other teachers so i would say just really uh, make the investment into yourself um, if something you've been contemplating uh, you're watching this webinar right now because i think this this is the time so really take the time invest in yourself and really develop the life that you deserve to have that's beautiful thank you so much thank you everybody so anyways until next time i will cheat you later Barf.